Hi, I'm Semen Yako. In this presentation, I'll explain the reasons for instability of operation amplified and suggest some remedies uh, to correct it. Now, the formal explanation for instability is really related to the uh, closed loop equation that we have here GA open loop and then divided by 1 plus B8 open loop. Actually, in the case of, let's say, inverting amplifier, as shown here, gain is negative, they are negative, this should be actually minus, or so minus, minus is plus, so here we come to this equation again, except that it should include the minus, which is, of course, uh, shown here. Now, the system will be instable if beta A is approaching minus 1. So it will be 1, minus 1, and then it sort of uh, blows up, and again it's sort of infinity, and this will be a case of sustained um, oscillation. Now, the gain itself, the A open loop, has normally uh, a shape like this, that is, uh, it is uh, usually compensated for having sort of a uh, dominant pole here, and then it goes on in minus 20 dB per decade. Okay, this will be the formal explanation. In fact, uh, you can see uh, some details in this clip that uh, I'm giving the uh, link here, and I'm going to put the link also in the uh, comment uh, part of this uh, uh, video part so that you can actually uh, go back and, and look at it. What I'm interested here is really to see in a more intuitive way what is really happening when you have uh, instabilities. Now let's sort of imaginary open the loop here. This is something that you cannot do in a practical way because once you open the loop the amplifier will go into saturation. But let's just imagine that we do that, and we inject a signal in here into the ports, the input ports of the amplifier, and we leave the feedback part and look at this point, which I'll call V sub E. Okay. Now, in general operations, since this is a, uh, a negative feedback amplifier, you would expect to see the signal that will return to be in opposite phase. That is, if you start with an excitation like this, you'll like to see a signal like this. Now, this really doesn't happen because the amplifier itself, as I've mentioned earlier, has a pole, so uh, it has sort of a uh, almost 90 degree phase shift because of this uh, minus 20 dB per decade. And this is because uh, the amplifier sort of looks like a uh, low-pass filter in a sense, and in a low-pass filter, if you have an incoming signal, uh, there is a delay, and the output signal is sort of shifted, and it comes a little bit later. Now, uh, this, uh, the maximum will be uh, 90 degree. This is okay, as long as the shift is not too much. So this will be the ideal case in which indeed the signal is uh, inverted and this is the output and then the signal which is reaching the input back uh, will be also inverted. But as I've said, this is really doesn't happen. So what would we get usually is the green part that is a little bit shifted, which is okay. okay. Now, if the shift is just too much, that is, you, you move uh, with the signal here because of extra delays that you might have in the circuit, I'll talk about it in a second, what will end up is that the signal might, let me erase um, this part here, the signal coming back uh, might be actually uh, in phase with uh, the signal itself, and therefore uh, you'll have a sort of positive feedback and oscillation might happen. So why would this 
why would you find these cases after you sort of build the circuit, everything looks okay, you turn it on and all of a sudden you look in here and you see uh, oscillation. Well, there are a number of reasons, I'll go over some of them. Most of them are related to either uh, phase lags or injected signal. What I mean by phase lags is, for example, the input ports do have some capacitance. Now, here is another low-pass filter from the output to the input, which usually is sort of not taken into account in the design. And if um, uh, the uh, frequency, the quarter frequency is fairly low, then it might add extra phase shift uh, to cause oscillation. Another reason is the capacitive load. Here's a load which has some capacitance to it. The amplifier has an output resistance. Here is another low pass circuit. And of course, uh, you, there is another phase shift here, and you'll get a signal of positive feedback. Other reasons are, for example, if the bypass capacitor are not that good and some residual signal can develop here, this can go actually inside the circuit and through the first stage uh, cause an internal feedback into the amplifier. Another reason might be uh, layout of the printed circuit. If this line and these are sort of close together, you might have capacitive coupling and there might be a, a parasitic path for a signal. There are other reasons. Some amplifiers do require a uh, compensation capacitor. They are actually connected into the internal circuitry. The impedance here is here is high, and consequently, a uh, capacitive parasitic coupling uh, could easily uh, build up. So instead of having a nice situation that is shown here, this will be the closed loop or the loop gain uh, of the amplifier uh, and it crosses the zero uh, dB, this is zero dB with a um, phase margin that is it has maybe sufficient uh, margin to the positive feedback point. Uh, you'll get something like this in which the phase sort of goes down and then therefore, even here, you already get a reversal uh, of the uh, signal and you get a positive feedback. What can be done? Well, there are two popular approaches uh, which are being used, uh, which are not really very good and I'll explain why. One of them would be to add a large, very large capacitor at the output. Well, the idea is to sort of attenuate the signal so that after returning to the input, after the um, network uh, that connects the output to the input, the level of the signal will be low enough so that uh, oscillation will not build up. Another approach that people are trying are we actually using a large capacitor here, and the idea is the same. Although the signal may be high here, as it comes back, uh, it will be attenuated by this capacitor. Both of these ideas or these approaches are not very good. The reason being that they not only attenuate the signal, but they are actually adding another 90 degree phase shift. And this is very bad because the whole problem started with extra phase shift that we have. And now we are putting in another phase shift. Now, if these capacitors are very, very large, uh, they might do the trick, that is, oscillation will cease, but then uh, you might have a very a narrow bandwidth. So what these approaches are actually doing is that they're actually attenuating the loop gain, but adding phase shift. So you sort of, on the one hand, you attenuate the signal, but then you go actually deeper to a larger phase shift. So it's sort of chasing uh, then 
uh, the phase shift, you have to add more capacitance, and eventually you can stabilize the circuit, but what will happen is rather than having a nice bandwidth, you're going to have a very, very, very narrow bandwidth uh, of the uh, closed loop. Now, usually you do have sort of to uh, sacrifice some of the bandwidth when you are uh, stabilizing the circuit, but with a large capacitor, the output or the input, the bandwidth is going to be extremely narrow. So what can be done? The best way to, to try stabilize the circuit is to put an RC network rather than just a capacitor. Now this is called a leg league uh, network and the idea is that you have both a resistor and a capacitor and here is the response of this uh, circuit. At low frequency you have a gain of one and then it starts to go down and the nice thing is that after passing another corner the gain stabilizes. The reason is that at high frequency the impedance of this capacitor is much smaller than the resistor so you actually end up with a voltage divider. This is equivalent uh, resistor and our Y. So this will be just the attenuation. So what happens with the phase is that although at the beginning you get the phase shift but then it comes back recovered and there is no phase shift. So here we have attenuation without phase shift. This is exactly what we want. We don't want to harm the phase more than needed, or we don't want to harm it any more at all, but we want to attenuate the signal, and we can do it with this circuit. There's a question here, why do you need a capacitor? Just put a resistor and that's it. Well, I'm not going to answer this, I'll leave it as a quiz. Uh, whoever is interested in that uh, and doesn't know the answer can write to me, I'll be more than happy to explain. So what is happening here is the following. This is the problem that we have. We have a certain gain, this is sort of a conceptual uh, drawing, it's not to scale or anything like that. This is the original, this is what we have. This is the phase of the original. And the problem we have that we have a lot of phase shift, that is the signal is becoming like a positive feedback while the gain is still high. Now the lag approach that is putting large capacitor is again attenuating the signal, that's fine, but adding phase shift so that again you are in a bad shape. The lag lead approach is attenuating the signal but after a while it doesn't add any more phase shift and actually you get back the original phase shift. So by that you can attenuate the signal and here when it passes the zero d, this is zero dB, uh, you still get, uh, you don't get the positive feedback, you get a nice uh, phase margin here which keeps you safe. So this actually brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope uh, was of interest and that uh, you'll find it useful. Thank you.